So in this segment, we are going to talk about um, doing playback and operator client. Depending on your privilege, privilege level within the software, you may or may not have rights to view playback. Um, however, there's a couple different things in playback that um, make it easier. Um, it's very similar to the live view of operator client. However, there are a couple of different buttons um, and a few extra features to help you search through video and find what you are looking for. So in playback, you can export video as well in a few different um, formats. And depending upon what you are using to export a video for will determine what type of format you export the video in. If your organization needs assistance with any aspect of BVMS or any of your security systems, please contact your security system vendor or our professional services team at support at midchess.com or visit our website at www.midchess.com. To access playback and operator client, um, we will go up to the top left corner. There are two icons at the top. The camera icon is the live mode, which you are in by default when you first launch operator client. Right next to live is going to be playback mode. Um, if you are ever unsure of what an icon means, if you just hover over the icon, it will show what that icon does. So we are going to switch to playback mode. So in playback mode, um, it's very similar to very similar to live mode. The functionality is still the same in terms of dragging cameras out to view them. Um, you're able to double click a camera and bring it out into the image pane. The biggest difference you'll notice is down at the bottom where the alarm cue might be in live, you will see a timeline appear with the cameras you have pulled up in the image pane up here. So as we drag out more cameras, more timelines will appear showing video associated with that camera. You can play all the videos at one time, pause all the videos at one time, and have them synced across, the time synced across all video at one time if you were to be following someone or a vehicle through multiple different cameras. With fixed cameras in playback you can still only do digital zoom. Um, this is the same functionality as it would be in live. PTZs, there's not much you can do besides digitally zoom since the optical zoom occurs when the recording is happening or in live mode the operator would have to be actively watching and controlling the camera to record a specific target in the image. Panoramics, however, are still able to be moved around after the fact, um, even in playback. You can still change the views from circle view to panoramic view. and to cropped view and still move around within the image of the camera. Down at the bottom, this area here is the main portion of playback. By default, when you bring cameras up for playback, it's going to jump to the latest recording. You can click through the timeline to go to different um, different points in the, the recorded video. This, this timeline bar down here, you can zoom in with your scroll wheel to get down to the exact minute um, and even down to the exact second. If you zoom out you'll see a wider view of time. Additionally, you can change the amount of 
video you're looking at by going to this area here. Right now we're looking at a three hour window of recorded video. We can change this to one week, um, one day. It just depends on what you are looking for. If you're trying to find video from a particular event and you kind of know when roughly it occurred, if it was within the what, past week, you can then work down from there through the days and then the specific hours in the day. If you know the exact time and date that an event occurred, you can go to the date and time bar here and enter in a specific time frame. So if we wanted to look for something on August 10th at 3.30 p.m., we would put that information in and then click this button here, which sets the hairline, which is this bar here. This bar shows what where in the timeline you are currently and what video you are looking at. If we set this, this will jump us back to one day ago at 3.30. So now we're looking at video from one day ago. This is just one of the few different ways you can search for video. Um, your playback controls are going to be located right here. You have pause, forward, single frame forward, which is going to click through the images at a single frame per click. Or if you press play, it'll play at the recorded speed that you have. The speed in which the camera records, or the frame rate in which the camera records, is set up within configuration client and cannot be changed in operator client. The far right button simply jumps you to the latest recording the camera has, which would more than likely be the current time you're looking at the recorded video. The same exact settings exist for going in reverse. You can play backwards, you can go single frame backwards, or you can jump to the oldest recording, which will take you back to the oldest recording the system has. In forward or reverse, you can control the speed in which you're viewing playback by clicking in this bar here. One is going to be the speed that the camera was recording at at the current time. And we can speed that up through the different speeds. Within this timeline window as well, depending on how the cameras are set up, for alarm recording or event recording, there will be different colors that indicate maybe an event that took place at a certain time during the day. But all that alarm configuration and event configuration is done through configuration client. When you found the video that you're looking for, and you need to export it, there are two ways that you can do an export of video. So as an example, we will jump to the latest recording. And down at the bottom, you'll notice this little blue bar that you can grab a hold of and select a period of time. And you'll notice the numbers and the date changing at the top. So this highlighted blue area is an export of video. The, the video in this, this block here will be what is exported. Once you've selected the time frame or narrowed down the time frame that you would like to export, we'll do from 12 to 1. You can right click within the blue highlighted area and select export video. There's a few other options here as well. Adding a bookmark will simply flag it in the timeline to review later on. Protecting the video simply means it cannot be recorded over. Unprotect video is just unprotecting it from being pr protected previously. 
restrict video would not allow you to see the video. Unrestrict would remove that. If you are in as an admin, you can delete video. You can verify the authenticity, making sure the video has not been tampered with or any packets have not been lost in the recording. And then back to bookmark. So for this example, we want to export video. This window is going to appear here, and there's a couple of different options within here to export video. You can change the name. In this example, we'll say test export. This range that is shown here is what you selected with the slider bars down at the bottom. If you want to get the time more exact, we could do, you can enter in your own values here. So we could do 1210 to 1215, if that's when the event occurred. So once the time range is selected, you have a couple different choices or a couple different formats to export the video in. Native would be used if the video is being used for court purposes and needs to be proven that it has not been tampered with. When you do this, this file cannot be played back in anything but Bosch Archive Player or Bosch Operator Client. When the file is exported in native, you can include Archive Player in the download so all the files required to play the video are together. MOV is simply a quicker way to export video and can be played on Windows Media Player. MP4 is another way to just export the video a little bit quicker and can also be played within Windows Media Player. For this example, we will do MOV. When you export, you can export the video as a single zip file, which you'd simply select by checking this box. Then you have the selection of where to store that, rec that exported video. Um, you can remotely export it to a network share. You can export it to a disk, a physical disk, or a USB flash drive, or whatever storage medium you're using. You'd simply just browse to it within Windows. can put comments on the disk, um, comments on the export um, to call out certain times or certain individuals or targets in the video, and then you would simply click export. The other way you can access exporting video, if you do not search it on the timeline like this, is at the far end of the playback controls, you have this icon here, which is export video. This is the same exact window that we just showed, and the steps to export the video are exactly the same. Additionally, in the playback controls, there are other ways to search for recorded video, either by events, text. Um, you can change what types of events and alarms you're looking for. Um, it just depends on how your system is configured.